Oh, I was wondering when you'd show up. Kasuga. Welcome to our humble abode. The pleasure's ours, you pink-caped freak. I was starting to get tired of waiting for you. Thought you might have run away. That would have been the smart choice. <laughs> We're not known for our smart choices. Time to cut the crap, Kasuga. Hmm? <laughs> Me? What crap would I have to cut? There's no way you'll ever become a god. You have to know that. You called yourself a chosen one and went around destroying delusions. Now you start lacking imagination? So your delusion is to become a god? It's not a delusion. It's reality. I will become a god, and you'll get to bear witness to my ascendance. Tell me, do you know what a god does? I don't have to to know you're full of crap. Come on. Why have you got to be so cold to your old buddy, Kasuga? A god's duty is to grant wishes. And that, ladies and gentlemen, I can do. Because what is a wish if not a delusion? Nobody'd ever be mad at a guy for granting wishes, would they? So you're saying you're just going to go around granting whatever wishes you feel like granting then? Wouldn't that make people happy? Look at the state of our society. People are awful at self-assertion. They can't even bring themselves to say what's in the depths of their souls. That's why they need a god like me. I can put everyone on equal footing. I can't deny that there are a lot of people out there afraid to speak their minds. But there's nothing wrong with that, because they'll always find someone they can open up to. Such naivete. And you really shouldn't talk back to your god, especially one who gave you the delusion contractor canon, the greatest development of our lifetimes. He's like a dream come true. Whose dream? Mine. From way back when I was just an itty bitty boy. What are you talking about? Once I realized that the delusions I saw were, in fact, delusions, my world changed completely. My everyday life as I knew it was over. My family was torn apart. It was as big a change as any the world's ever seen. Before I knew it, I was locked away in a dark room and subjected to a myriad of experiments. A human guinea pig. No matter how loud I cried out, how much I said, it hurts. Save me. Stop. Nobody heard me. Nobody came. Nobody helped. Of course, when you're experimenting with delusions, you need a test subject. I mean, it only stands to reason, right? And so, even at a young age, I remember thinking, there is no god. So you decided to become one yourself? That's right. That's exactly right. If I become God, then this world will finally turn the way it's meant to. I didn't have the power as a child. I couldn't fill that void. And that little boy, unable to realize his dream of becoming an omnipotent being, was forced to find a new dream. So he played along, pretended to share the DAB's ideals. If he did that, maybe he could get his hands on his new dream. And what is that new dream? The purest dream a lonely person could ever have. To have a friend. Nothing more. You're not talking about... A friend who is himself a beautiful dream. Someone who could grant the boy's wish, and everyone else's too. Canon. Time passed, and that boy became a man. And that man met the friend he'd wished for from the very bottom of his heart. And that friend helped him remember his old dream. His dream to become God. So, I guess in a way, I really do owe you all thank you cards. You don't owe me Jack. Oh, but I do. I wouldn't have been able to meet Cannon without you. What do you mean? You seriously haven't noticed. Cannon is a byproduct of the reality we exist in right now. For the one who made me what I am today, the one responsible for everything going on is you. Are you saying... My deepest thanks to you, Asahi. What does that mean? Asahi, you've put everything you have into this crazy quest of yours. And because of that, Cannon was born. Just tell me already, how is this my fault? My delusion alone wasn't enough. It was ill-equipped to create a being of Cannon's majesty. 
So I'd just been waiting, biding my time, hungrily seeking the perfect opportunity to bring him into the world. But no matter how long I waited, the chance never came. Until one day, a young woman came to Akihabara. Me? Yes, princess. You were the one to give me the opening I so sorely needed. Delusions spread so much faster in Akiba than anywhere else. It's as if the whole town is shrouded in unreality, and the effect that has is immense. Strong enough to make time loop upon itself. So I put my plan into effect. I knew that now, I could finally meet Cannon. Wait, so Cannon isn't responsible for the day repeating? Jeez, just because a delusion can spawn others, you think it can alter the flow of time? Come on now. Can he not? Not at all. Talk about oversimplifying things. Stay with me now. Rumors of canon only started spreading after Sunday began repeating, right? The rumors? So that's it. Hey, stop understanding things that we're still trying to figure out. Oh, ragey, ragey, ragey. You always were a sharp one. Yes, the rumors themselves were the catalyst. Before there was a cannon, I was cannon. Donning a pink cape and kidnapping a random maid to keep things interesting. Making certain that I had witnesses, of course. So you were the one who kidnapped Moe way back when? Then a handy group of meddling kids went searching for the man in pink, questioning every Akihabara citizen they could find and perpetuating the rumors even farther. No, that can't be. And that's how it all started. The delusion of the pink-caped man, an urban legend brought to life. So the urban legend itself became a delusion. That's right, Rabbit. Delusions aren't reset when time skips back. An urban legend can persist from loop to loop. So the legend of the pink-caped man lives on, as if it had been whispered about for years. So that's why the number of people who'd heard of the pink-caped man seemed to grow. And since it's a delusion, normal logic doesn't apply. People bought into the story the second they heard it. Well, it helps if you give it a little bit of dramatic flair. Put a name on it, like the Delusion Contractor. You even gave him his title? Of course I did, and I spread it far and wide. That was made a lot easier, of course, by a gang of do-gooder kids. And he wasn't just a man in a pink cape. No, he was a being capable of manipulating delusions. This man of mystery wore a silk hat, had a golden bob, and even carried a cane. It all came from your questioning. His appearance? You came up with that. His powers as a delusion contractor? That was all you too. So I brought the canon rumor to life because I helped spread it? Mm-hmm. Took you long enough, but you finally get it. And that's why I've got to thank you. Canon's not my delusion, not yours, but the collective delusion of everyone in Akihabara. And the more the rumors of his exploits spread, the more readily people will believe in him. So, yeah, you might not have known it, but you used the people of Akiba to give birth to Canon and empower him. Then what were the letters? Letters? Oh, the warning letters. I almost forgot about those. See, once I had Cannon, well, I didn't need you anymore. So you tried to keep us out of the delusion scapes. Unfortunately, you were a little too good at your job. Too many Cannons were born, and I only wanted one true friend. And disposing of the others was a painful task, but it did allow me to winnow them down to the one true Cannon. My greatest friend, my true blue, my honey BFF. That is not a best friend. And you're really putting his creation on me after all your machinations? You've got to be out of your mind. And what you wished for? That's not a friend at all, much less a best friend. It was somebody you could use for your own twisted ends. That's no friend. That's a tool. And so are you. Asahi. You don't get to decide who's a friend or not. You don't know what my 